blessings. We are back with another Tree Talk episode. It's been a while. It's been a long time coming, but we are back. We have two new special guests coming to the show. I'm happy to uh, present my man Kofi. Um, met him not too long ago. I actually met him like last year at Little Five Points. When I was out there posted up, he came about, kind of gave, you know, gave us a little magic trick. That's why I want to bring him onto the show because he showed me a magic trick that was just like, okay, hold up, man. This man also be on some next level. Next level thing. So, welcome to the Tea Talk, bro. Definitely have for sure, for sure. To the right of me, we got Connie, a surprise guest. I didn't know she was coming into the show, but we had our first feminine energy on the show. The basis of today's show is actually, you know, surrounded around, you know, magic or, you know, things that make you creativity, delving into the unknown, the unseen aspects of reality, and then bringing it back to integrate it to yourself. You know, and I just want to, you know, start with my man Kofi, you know what I'm saying? Because he is the, the expert magician, you know. I haven't seen him lately doing the things, but I know he's definitely progressing and doing great things. So, Kofi, you can tell the people, you know what I'm saying, what you're about, you know, how did you get started, you know, just a little bio of yourself. Got you. Well, uh, my name is Kofi Sa. I've been doing magic in Atlanta going on 15 years. And I started when I was about five years old. I went to a camp in Decatur, Georgia, that taught everything in a circus called Circus Camp. Wow. And uh, they taught juggling, clowning, face paint, trapeze, and acrobatics. And the first time I saw one of the ca- uh, camp counselors do a magic trick for me, mm-hmm. I caught the bat bug, as they saw it, saying magic. So when, yeah. we, when we catch the bug, we see someone who does magic, we know that's what we want to do. So mm-hmm. ever since I, I saw somebody do that, and he really amazed me with this card trick, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. Mm-hmm. And I was 10 years old when I had my first show. And ever since then, having a job sounded crazy. And, you that's know, funny. I knew that that's what I wanted to do after I made uh, $100 doing a kid's birthday party. And the dad uh, from the kid walked up to the car when my mom picked me up and gave me an extra 20 <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so, that's yeah, lit. That was dope. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So when it comes with magic and being a magician, you know, don't I don't want I don't want you to give away you know your secrets or yeah. your in and outs, but let's just like what is there a particular mindset that you have to possess in order to you know be able to manipulate what's actually there? Yeah, there's definitely a lot that goes into it. You know, they always say um, the hands quicker than the eye. Yeah, they talk about uh, misdirection. Mm. Uh, there's another principle in magic where. Mis- it's basically how misdirection works a lot of times, yeah. which is the big motion hides the small motion. Mm. So, you know, they kind of, they get that with us a lot in the politics, you know, so they get us to watch one big event that's going on yeah, there's a huge doing something else relationship going here. on in the world okay. that is involving the banking. So it's just like directing attention elsewhere. Right. Just, it's just playing on your your misinformation or things of that nature. Yeah, so some of the best magicians study psychology, mm. you know, mm. um, and I've been interested in that, but I could say that, you know, it's not always necessary. Yeah. Some magic tricks are use a lot of props yeah. and things that are very self-working. Mm, you know, okay. there's a lot of self-working yeah. magic tricks and magicians that use a lot of self-working tricks Yeah. so that they can really focus more on the presentation mm. and just the fun of it. Right, right, right. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know, but I think as far as progressing in the craft it's always good when we have magicians who want to take it to the next level mm. create new things as well as really learn the technical aspects yeah. as well as the psychological aspects of wow. theater and magic wow. yeah that's incredible it's yeah incredible that you said theater because uh all theater is really uh casting spells you know what i'm saying when yeah movies it's like yeah definitely some best spell casting so you definitely need to be grounded you know definitely with yourself before you partake of these movies Man, that's definitely incredible that you said that. So, when it comes to you know the magicians and things of that nature, there is what is the purpose? What what is the purpose when it comes to being a magician? Because I know in a in the simple sense, we all magicians in our in our own heart. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're, we're creators. We create every, each and every day. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I like one of these uh, favorite quotes. Um, you know about Houdini, mm-hmm. right? Houdini's real name was Eric Wise. Mm-hmm. He was a Jewish kid. And uh, he named himself after a French magician named Robert Houdini, um, spelled Robert. And uh, Houdini has this famous quote, the original Houdini from uh, France has this uh, famous quote where he says, a magician 
is just an actor playing the role of a magician. <laughs> um, and so for me, you ask me what would it, what's it mean to be a magician or why you would do it. Um, was that your question? It's along those lines, yeah. Um, I feel like it's just about somebody who knows that's the role they want to play. Mm -hmm. It's to bring amazement and magic mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. Bring that childlike feeling of like, Oh, how did that yeah, happen? Yeah, know? exactly. Um, so we're just actors, mm -hmm. and we we like that aspect of shock and surprise and mm -hmm. happiness and yeah. questioning things. Yeah. So maybe some people are in the shock magic, so freaking people out. Some people might like that yeah. aspect of it. <laughs> I think that's fun, but that's not my favorite part. That's true. I just watch David Blaine. I like I like the freaking people out part, but my favorite part is when people get amazed. Amazing. You know yeah. when they when they like. Yeah. Go, Wow, yeah, you know that's exactly. that's what I really. It's like a, it's like an aha for. moment a lot yeah. of times. Like a turn, it could be like a turning point for some people. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know if it's along the same lines. Like my art shows, I'll get some people to come yeah. up. You know, have that little aha moment. Like wow, you know what I'm saying? So we definitely are definitely changing hearts. You know what I'm saying? With that, so we definitely continue along those lines. We'll get deeper into that yeah. on the show. Next, I want to shift over to Connie. You know what I'm saying? Connie, you're, you're an artist, right? Yes, definitely I an am. artist. Oh yes. yeah. So definitely tell the people about your artistry and a little bit about yourself, a bio about yourself as well, where you're from, things that you do and things of that nature. Yes, yes, oh, for yeah. sure. Hi, I'm Connie. I started out from just being a kid, yeah. playing with my imagination, mm -hmm. playing with my creativity. Alone in my room, I would pretend to be different stories, different characters, and through creating in so many ways, I learned not only of how I can use my mind, but I also connected to myself as well. Mm -hmm. So I continuously just spent my entire time doing this, and one of the peak points in my journey of learning art and business was studying Basquiat. And Basquiat. something that really inspired me that he did was he was so inspired by Andy Warhol, and he went to different places. Yeah, he's yeah. the guy that painted the Campbell and Noodle Soup Cans. Mm. Pop art. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Yeah, you're good. He was determined to meet Andy Warhol and he went to a restaurant and saw Andy Warhol in there eating mm -hmm. and he had different postcards with his art on there and he presented it to Andy Warhol and wow. it's like that's a salesperson thing to do and mm -hmm. often we as artists sometimes we separate our art from business when people like that's Basquiat true. were exactly. doing it, you yeah, know, so. It's like it's, mind and body. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like becoming the art, becoming confident exactly. in the art. Exactly. So that's something I like to remember. <laughs> and he's exactly. a Capricorn, yeah. which brings up another thing. I love talking about astrology. Astrology, I am the astrologer. Zodiacs, definitely. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I've seen on your own Instagram lives. Definitely give me the readings, definitely. Yeah. Props to that. Cool. Yeah, space. The universe is so cool. I've always had a fascination with space, especially Agreed. Jupiter. Agreed. Yeah. I actually downloaded this app called The Pattern, where actually, you know, day by day it tells you, you know, your influence with the horoscopes on this day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it could be the moon in Capricorn or, you know, Mercury in retrograde, things of that nature. So when we're all born, we are, there is a specific aligning of the universe, you know, that we all are influenced by. So horoscopes definitely hold weight. They definitely hold a lot of weight. Yes. I believe it is upon us to overcome those things though, not necessarily box ourselves in and be like, oh, I'm stubborn. Oh, I can just be like, that's me. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, things yeah. of that nature. So yeah. I feel that. Yeah, it's a tool for growth for sure. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. So um, with regards to your art, what is, um, is there a specific theme that you uh, carry with your art? You know, or what is what is the story behind 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 your artwork? Self growth, self awareness, yeah. self love. It's mainly introspection. Like every artwork I make is a capture of where my conscious was at that moment. Cause it's always changing, yeah. always expanding. So each of my art shares a story of expansion, yeah. a story of evolution. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As, as, as we should though, you know what I'm saying, as each individual you know, should strive to be, you know, soul yeah. expansion. The soul should never get stuck or stagnant in one way of being. It's to constantly grow and evolve, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I love I just had a, I just had a shroom experience. Um, um, I was on a rock at Chattanooga River and it was so profound. Like, as I was sitting on the river, clearing my head, like literally I went to, you know, just a state of just peaceful bliss. All the birds sat beside me. 
like bugs came out of nowhere and were crawling on me like some Snow White type thing. Like I literally immediately thought about Snow White and it was just like Snow White was singing songs. She was singing, she was in harmony with the universe. Mm -hmm. The birds, everything else came out and sung with her. So that means she was in tune, she was in line with that which was God or the unseen current, whatever you want to call it, she was in line. And it was just like, wow, yeah. like, yeah. that's incredible. And then I opened my eyes and there were three daddy long legs floating in front of me. What? And there was one crawling on my what? arm. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and, like, crazy. and when I first saw it, I kind of like freaked out just yeah. for a second. I was yeah. like, what? Spiders? Yeah. Internally, right? Yeah. And then I looked at it, I was like, okay, it's just a spider. It's just a spider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh, let me chill. Let me chill. I feel that. That's what's up. Yeah. Wow, now that you said that, like that same day when I was on that on that trip with mushrooms, mm -hmm. I saw a quick glimpse of like it was like a web in in the sky. It was so it was so uh, it's so hard to explain. Like yeah. uh, a cosmic web, like something was weaving yeah. reality together. Yeah, and I saw like the the crisscross intersections of like this invisible. Line. It was it, like I said, reality as we know it is. It's not as what it's what it seems, you know what I'm saying? But Kofi definitely can can show that through manipulating your your mind, you know what I'm saying, through some magic, you know what I'm saying? So wow, definitely. Um I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you brought anything, could you do a magic trick for, yeah. the, for the camera? Yeah, I'd love to do two. Okay. Uh, one we can do in you know, we'll see if it works. Okay. Okay, but, so I'll but, do it for the people watching. But Okay. But. So what I want you to do is I want you to just think of a shape really quickly, first thing that comes to your mind and put another shape inside of it, okay? Once you have that, just lock it in your mind, and then I want you to imagine, if you're watching right now, to put that shape in my head. I'm gonna try and read your mind, okay? I think you might have put a triangle with a square inside. Now, if that worked for you at home, I'll teach you why it works. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it's a psychological suggestion, just teaching you how reality is manipulated for us sometimes, wow. right? So I said, Think of a shape, and I went like this. I drew a triangle in the air, uh, right? And then I said, put another shape inside of it, and I drew a square right yeah. there in front of it. So some people watching it, they may yeah. have experienced that. I don't know, the cameraman, did you do it? I got a circle inside of a square. Damn, I did that one. I yeah, did you did that. <laughs> well, I actually did a square inside of a circle. Yeah, yeah. Square, so it's so close square. enough, yeah, right, yeah. where it kind of felt like I was reading your mind a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, so yeah. I can show you a, a card trick as well. But that's a fun one that yeah. I saw that once on a... Uh, I, I knew it before, um, but I saw it on a TV show too, mm -hmm. and the guy taught it in the TV show, and I, I forget what the show was called, but it was some show mm -hmm. with a guy who could read faces, mm -hmm. and it was for the police, oh, wow. and so he could tell if you're lying and stuff like yeah. that. I can't remember the name of the show. Do you, you remember that? I don't remember. I, know, I, I, I know, you know the show like that, about? but I don't know the name. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. There was one part in the show where I remember he was talking to his daughter, and he was like reading his daughter, and his daughter was like, "You don't need to read me. Do not say that for your job." Yeah, and I was like, okay. "When you know how to read people, how do you turn that off?" That you know, true. I thought that it could be like a curse. That can be like a curse in a sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? it can. Able to have everybody's reality in your head. Right. Like somebody asked me one time, "Would you rather be invisible or would you rather be?" read people's minds. Yeah, that's, I, I, I'd rather I would be invisible. invisible. Yeah. I'd rather be invisible. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's you know yeah. It's a I, lot I'd to rather deal with, my, deal with my reality. I don't want nobody else's yeah. situations or burdens in my head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. With mm -hmm. great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. All right, that's so fact. here, I'll show you a quick one. And uh, here's what we'll do. You just tell me to stop shuffling wherever I want. All right, and stop. Okay, so I, you're going to take out a card and um, I'm gonna turn around and then you show it to the camera. Okay. Okay, and you look at it as well. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. All right. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Okay, you can show it to Tiny too if you want. I see that. Oh, yeah. Did the camera see it too? It's like perfect. <laughs> All right, we good. All right, cool. So I want you to say stop wherever. Stop. Right there. All right, put your card there. And would you say, how many cards would you say that is on top? Would you get on top? Uh, yeah. I'd say that's about 12 cards 12? on top. Okay. I'm going to try to find your car using a quick move. Was that it? That was it. That was it? No, that wasn't it. That, that wasn't, wasn't it. Okay, okay. <laughs> was it close? God damn, yeah, very close. Yeah. Very close? yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's see if this is it, though. That was, that's cool though. That I didn't even do that. On, I love how sometimes the magic happens to me. Yeah. Like I did not do that on purpose. But see, was that your card? No. Okay. Uh -huh. The three's not your card. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this three, all right, and I'm going to move slow. So I want you to put your foot on top of it right there. Okay. Okay. Now, right here, I have, I'll set. Yeah, I got to shake it the other way. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Let me see. Yeah, there you go. So if I give it a shake, that's when they switch. Let's see if I take this one down here. Let me see here. See now that's. <laughs> Did you get that? Uh, I got oh it. Oh my god. Whoa, that's trippy. Yo. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Y'all see this reaction right now? I almost, like... almost tear it up right now. Yo. That's crazy. <laughs> like, it literally got up off my foot and went. In. Oh wow. Man. Incredible. Yeah, that's a good one. Incredible. Breathtaking. So that's like the amazement. Yeah, man. That's. What's the right. trick? <laughs> No, nah, never, never show your secrets. Never show your secrets. But man, that's wild right there. That's like, but yeah, that's like basic right there, huh? Speaking of like magic and manipulation and the relationship to like all this use of the shamanic tools mm -hmm. and understanding spirituality, right? Mm -hmm. I think you know a lot of people ask me, or maybe you asked me a little bit earlier. You said we talked a little bit about what magic is. Yeah. Right. So I was thinking maybe I could explain what my beliefs are around that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. i feel like I, i've gone through a a large shift yeah you know, like quantum yeah. leaps and exactly. under, understanding yeah. right and um in the field of magicians a lot of times people who aspire to be magicians or who like that type of stuff are skeptics mm -hmm. because we are naturally people who see a magic trick and go there's a way to do that exactly. that's just a problem yeah, and I want to yeah. figure out how solve to solve it. that, exactly. you know? Yeah. And we don't naturally believe in anything that's, like, unseen. Mm -hmm. You know, most magicians, as far as sleight of hand, mm -hmm. right, and the field of illusion, right, You Penn and Teller, they have a show. You heard of Penn and Teller? Mm -hmm. In their show they have called Fool Dust, mm -hmm. where the people try to fool them mm -hmm. on TV. Yeah, heard that. Well, they're famous in Las Vegas. Yeah. And they have a show on Showtime called Bullshit. <laughs> and in this show, they talk about uh, how a lot of different things are bullshit. And one of the episodes is about religion. So that's just some evidence to how a lot of magicians are into skeptic yeah, stuff. Yeah. And a lot of magicians are not sense. really big believers mm -hmm. on the spiritual. Yeah. Right? And so because I was in a large field of that, and I was naturally like that as a child, I was really attracted to atheism. I was just going to mention that too, like, so are most magicians atheists? Like, so I would say that a lot of magicians are atheists, however... There's a large field of gospel magic. Yeah. Magicians in the Bible Belt in the South who use magic to communicate stories from the Bible. Mm. Who use magic tricks to communicate stories from the Bible. Yeah, it so, on. you know, I would say it's a good amount of magicians who are atheists. However, you know, it's a, it's a good balance as well. But I would just say because I came from that side that was a little bit more of a skeptic, it took me really experiencing the spiritual to accept it. Mm -hmm. You know, in a on a deeper, more profound and mystical way than somebody just saying, You're a spirit and God is the one right, who's gonna exactly. you yeah. know, save you and if yeah. you don't praise God and Christ, this is what you this is you know, you're no going to hell or you know. Exactly. So taking those words and the doctrine was different for me taking on the experience and the mystical side and once I mm -hmm. able to even get information that exposed me to the more mystical understandings mm -hmm. or the esoteric which is the internal and exactly. then the exoteric exactly. which is the external the surface level right the surface level exactly. so when i got into more of the esoteric i really started to understand that god and life is magic mm -hmm. and that every mm -hmm. day when we experience the duality the correspondence and the above and the below mm -hmm. right when we get to realize that the same thing we're experiencing around us is what we're experiencing internally exactly, exactly. right and then everything just like this shirt you know is coming from here mm -hmm. what we're observing it's really just all our perspective mm -hmm. and that's the real magic out of everything mm -hmm. it's just it's all just how you look at it perspective it's just that's creating true. reality that's you know? true because um, i was listening to side guru and it was just like we're just simply making up things in our minds so it's like if it makes you happy if it makes you at peace who says you're wrong? You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. says that you're wrong for actually living out what's true for you? You know 
terms and it's all 